it's done. Finally it's done. Um, puts it on a scale. It's um, 850 gram. Uh, yeah, including the toggles and uh, everything. The uh, cordage. So this is, um, yeah, going with my 1.6 kilo uh, main top. So this is actually 2x2 two two meter, which is a 4 square meter, yeah, and the 3x3 three three meter, um, obviously it's a 9 meter in square, yeah, and um, 9 square meter. Okay, another morning, another porridge. Uh, I can't tell you. Can't do without uh, some base in the stomach. Uh, the next day, yeah, I really want to finish this um, plush, plush balash go off. Uh, once I started that, uh, um, yeah, I told you I got all this mushy apples, so uh, cut the thing off. Um, it's a daily routine and uh, sometimes yeah, you can t call it sort of important to get into it like uh, yeah that's why we call it a routine isn't it is that? Uh, a bit odd this day today Not quite awake yet. After breakfast, just to wash the gritty bits down. And, uh, yeah. and uh, I might get started again. Having a bit of closer look to the drawing. And, uh, yeah. Good morning, good morning. Uh, it's always a bit tricky to get into a swing. Uh, so not quite clear yet. But uh, well, I want to start with this one. So I had a bit of look on the on the drawing to get an idea of uh, where to put the top. Yeah, like the, the hoodie bit and the shoulder parts and how to do the seam and. Um, yeah, just to sharpen my pencil for a start. Um, having a nice marked up uh, well, just makes it a bit easier to sharpen that China graph. Uh, yeah. Takes a bit in the morning to get into full swing. So it's uh, best to start with a little bit, little things. Uh, yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do today, <clears throat> I don't need the machine. I get uh, put this on the side in a moment. Um, yeah, I take my top, well, the <laughs> square I made up yesterday and um, mark all the important things up um, like the shoulder parts and the distance for the hoodie bits and you know the drawstring thingies and uh, we have to put the uh, my buckles uh, not buckles what are they toggles yeah and uh, the slots and uh, what it is because I wanted to make only a very small uh, half an inch turnover all the way around so um, <clears throat> I have to use some of the scrap to make some, uh, uh, you know, like uh, patches along the edge where it's a bit more stable because obviously um, the benefit of having a wide turnover is that the material is tripled basically 
and that uh, gives a really stable solution for the slots, for the toggles and um, drawstring attachments. So um, I just used some of the scrap for making small square bits and tack them into the uh, turnover seam, yeah, only at the point where I actually have to make some slots or toggles into. So um, the overall design basically remains very lightweight. Uh, instead of having a white border basically all the way around, I only make a little gap on each end where I actually need to have it. Um, that's what I did on the top and um, yeah there's no need to have more material on the thing than absolutely needed um, yeah so uh, get me get my uh, space cleared up now and uh, lay this out mark it up and that's what i'm doing now okay now um obviously i have to fold the uh, well, first we'll have to find or decide which side we're going to use um, as a hoodie end. And that's going to be this side because, uh, you wouldn't see that, because this is the, the turnover edge here, yeah. So when I put this on top as a hoodie bit, the water can actually rinse off instead of getting into the seam just rinse off so okay now this is my outside outside top yeah so i mark this outside top so that means i got my edge sorted off and i'll just turn it inside out and uh, yeah, this is the, the rougher end on the inside. Um, so, um, just as a quick uh, jobby, and um, I'm iron all the way around now, just by half an inch, yeah, to give this a turnover, proper turnover. And um, I'm not getting mistaken by, uh, so I got a nice edge, but, but I'm not stitching that up yet. I only uh, basically iron that. Heavy canvas, you usually just go around like that, yeah, and uh, you've got a sharp edge. But this is so thin and soft, like a summer dress. <laughs> um, I'd rather use the iron. Because uh, it uh, makes it more, uh, yeah, anyway, that's um, just the way of doing it. Yeah, it takes time, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I have to uh, recall myself never rush, gives you time to. Think about what you are doing. And, uh, and one thing I actually learned never start counting. Like, oh, if you start counting, like, oh, I have to do so many more, you know, like, and uh, I'll never get finished, and you get all this negative thought. And uh, the best thing is just switch your head off. Some people switching the music on instead. And, uh, but then they get lost in the swing. <laughs> and uh, forget what they're doing. So I'm uh, like a quiet. Let's turn this another way, another time around. I have to do that all the way. Actually, I may have to put the tablecloth underneath. Because uh, the iron starts 
getting onto the varnish of that table. Yeah. So as you can see, just uh, working my way. And uh, yeah, gonna do that all the way around and uh, I'll spare you watching that. Who does his, uh, his or hers ironing on a Sunday morning? It's the shirts, yeah, like to get them ready for the for Monday Monday morning office. Uh, who knows what that is about? Uh, but well, yeah, needs to be done. I don't care about wrinkles and creases. Uh, I don't care about that. <laughs> Getting on with it. Yeah, so as you can see, one side is done. And uh, getting the old edge here. Marked up. Right, now I've got my seam all the way around. Yeah, and we are here now on the on the top. Can okay, you okay, see that? The outside top, yeah. So um, originally they had five centimeter turnover, yeah. Like, uh, let's see if you can see that. Maybe there, there. So five centimeter. That's basically two inch, yeah. Maybe you can see that. So usually on the on a heavy top they got two inch turnover, yeah. So <laughs> basically. What I did here was half an inch, yeah, it's uh, the same what they did, so it just uh, had a bit like fold like that, yeah, so I'm reducing that to an half an inch, but um, I still want to uh, put an eyelet in here, yeah, and uh, so what I'm doing, I'm extending that basically, uh, so I want to have it ending up like at five centimeters. So I'm going uh, from here to here. So that's basically my uh, so that's where the patch it's actually put in place. So the finished patch actually sitting in here that's where i put the patches in on each corner yeah so i got to stable uh can i put my eyelid right here i may even reduce that a bit i could even do it a bit shorter it's basically uh, should i put that on five yeah, give it a bit. Let's say settle for six, six centimeter. Yeah. So, I'm, uh, so that makes it, let's say eight, eight. Actually, this is more likely nine patch. Yeah. So I'm crossing that out. And uh, yeah, I do that on each corner. And uh, there another, um, so I got the corner settled. Um, <clears throat> the next step is um, to find out they got one, two, three, four, five, six slots on each side. So that's 24 slots in total. That means 24 patches additionally to the triangle along the side yeah um, so I have to work out where I put that one but um, to do the more important things for now it's about to find out where to put the um, uh, the hoodie bit the shoulder part so they say 75 from the well that's 75 from the uh, 
on the edge. So this is here the start of the uh, well, channel for the drawstring. Yeah. Yeah, I marked most of the uh, stuff up, especially the um, curved bit for the uh, shoulder part. And um, now it's a very delicate uh, um, moment. I actually have to work out how to make use of the rest of the material I've got left to make this large shoulder bit. Yeah? Um, I did mark the uh, the handle, you know, the, the slot for the to get the hat through on the opposite side, on the left hand side. Not because I'm left-handed, but and I'm not uh, carrying an AK-47 either. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm using my left hand for my Gramlich stick, yeah. So uh, I want to slot on the left hand instead of the right hand. Usually they have the AK-47 in the right hand like that, you know, just get the trigger hand out. But I want my hand on the stick while walking. And yeah, I um, have to work out how to do that. So that's why I prefer having a bit, a break, a sort. Um, what next step uh, to go into. Yeah, quite pleased with that so far. It's just, um, um, yeah, to make this half moon shoulder bit. It's uh, quite a large, long piece. But, and so I have to, I mean, it's plenty wide enough what I got here, but I may have to, because, uh, <laughs> It's even long enough for doing it, but I have to join it together the way basically how they did, did it here. And uh, not exactly, but uh, I may put the joint somewhere else. But um, yeah, I tell you what, this drawing is absolutely um, perfect. It's very precise. And they even put the radius for the uh, curved thingy down. And it works out exactly as I uh, need that. Um, because I worked my way down from top to bottom, yeah. And all the measurements, they actually, they just match. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. I really can recommend this original um, Soviet Union plush palatka pattern it's definitely a help and you can just walk or work through the drawing and uh, yeah it works out I'm, it's amazing really amazing they did a good job um, where's my pencil um, all this marking up took quite a while. Um, as I say, the radius of this one here actually is exactly how it's on the drawing. So my problem actually was, or is, uh, I haven't got enough material in one piece to do all this shoulder bit. So I actually have to join that in three parts. Like the smaller bits here, the other smaller bit here, and then one bigger one in the middle. Um, that works out so far. Um, then I got the hoodie bit. Um, I worked out where the uh, slots are going to be. Uh, additionally, yeah, I uh, folded some uh, the channel bits. They're gonna go in here. Gonna be which one we want this way around. And then uh, I'm going to be tacked and, no, what's the right way uh, in here, so the, the rope actually uh, ending up on the end, yeah, where it comes out. So that goes all the way a bit in a curve, 
down here and for the triangle bits for the stability I got this thingies here which I tuck into the seam yeah and um, I may do that before I actually um, just in stages yeah before I put the big piece on at least I got the edges and I got all the foldings in place and um, yeah I think uh, at least I come a bit further with it switch the machine on so uh, yeah start with a little triangle this is a bit a shorter version so I'm putting that in here uh, See, so I'll chuck that in there and uh, line that up. This is a bit. First triangle. Um, I suppose I could uh, stitch it all the way, but yeah, uh, there's too much, too many things I have to uh, take care of. So otherwise, I would go around the edge and just tuck the thingies in as I'm going. Um, doing a bit a different way today stitching in the edges first and then uh, give it a, a go all the way around but this is a bit awkward now but um, all right. it's not an easy job so to cut these tips off and place that in here Turn the fold neatly, put the needle down, line that up again, cut the tip off. Is that? Oops, is that all right? Yeah. So as you can see, so I'm gonna what I'm gonna do to give it a be even uh, more stability, I'm gonna hand stitch some uh, leather bits right here, yeah, like, and on the other side, then punch a hole into it so that it gives me the eyelet I'm actually looking for. Very similar to the um, original one. But uh, the seam is actually well, only half as wide, well, even less, only a quarter. Usually it would be an inch like up here, yeah? So this would be, i uh, just, yeah, as you can see, <laughs> improvising a bit. Quite a tricky, iffy uh, thing because this is a channel that comes from the top yeah from the triangle top and uh, so I actually have to feed a rope in here so um, I only take well using a very thin one but um, I have need to, an open end on the end so uh, what they did originally they um, because they had <laughs> more material on the two inch on the side um, plenty uh, space to feed a chunky rope through, but um, I have to stabilize the, the edge as well a bit. So I'm tucking the half half of the channel 
into the, my half inch seam and uh, see how I'm ending up with it. So I'm leaving a bit space on the end and I started from the middle uh, downwards um, so to get the center properly up here so I actually can carry on and uh, locking this one off so this side is sort of finished good to me. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. That's the, the tip here yeah? where the eyelet goes in and this is the, the channel for rope on the top on the uh, forehead. So this gets turned around, puts the rope through and I can pull the hood together. So that's the idea of it. Uh, now I have to do the other side and that's going to be interesting how to uh, forgot the uh, pull the uh, recording trigger again so what I actually did on this end here uh, actually I, using the dynamo uh, cord the one and a half millimeter yeah the thin one um, created a loop there locked it off like so and uh, feed the, uh, the cord into the channel so by locking it off here on the tip it doesn't come off and I can't get pulled out yeah and uh, I have to stitch very close to the edge and uh, make sure the curve actually works out like for the channel and um, yeah, make sure I'm not um, get the, the cord cord up in the in the under the needle. So uh, yeah. so that's a drawstring for the forehead uh, sort of. Closure. Yeah, we're getting a bit fiddly. You see, I just uh, well, almost got the front bit quite nicely, and uh, yeah, I carry on with my <laughs> tricky bits. Oh yeah. So the first step is done. Worked my way from top to bottom. Now I got this channel bit in here. Yeah, the one that goes over like getting the, the hoodie bit tight yeah so I got a bit of curve it's a bit wrinkly but it doesn't matter first of all the canvas gonna shrink a bit when it's got wet and I actually uh, iron that a bit and if there's a bit play in the channel as well it doesn't matter really because it gives the uh, cord a bit more play to work and wrinkle the material together so uh, yeah, I locked the, the cord off in the middle so it can't get pulled out either way. And um, so, yeah, that's going to be pulled like that. And then uh, that's forming the hood. Yeah. Alright, that was a bit of a task. Um, now the shoulder bit want to be done. I have to prepare the, um, the thing and I uh, already got all the corner, corners done yeah. uh, once I got all the seams finished I'm giving it a rub with some wax and iron them all flat and tight and uh, yeah it's all the additional little um, task to do, but for now, uh, yeah, I'll figure out how to do the 
the square bit well, to join three pieces together to form this half moon shape for the shoulder so I double the material and uh, when it's pouring down on the shoulder it doesn't stroke in right away so I got a bit more protection there yeah slow growing project I'm not yet sure how to do the uh, slots for the uh, toggles but uh, well either way I'm getting there in the end um, have to improvise and see how I'm getting along yeah. so give me a little bit of break partly worked it out how I'm gonna have it um, so you can see I stitched the three parts together like uh, there's a middle bit and uh, that's the tip of the hoodie bit the uh, channel for the cord so that actually coming out here so I'm not quite finished yet I just tuck it under here stitch it up and then um, actually there's a bit too much material here which actually get cut off later but actually there's a curve the uh, going around this way later on yeah so uh, I fix the end points so I got the tension right for the whole thing and then um, yeah that's how it's gonna go yeah it's half past four in the afternoon and I'm calling it lunch I've been messing around with this lot all day long uh, but <laughs> it doesn't matter really I mean uh, once my head is spinning around some um, little issues and I uh, can't stop can't stop it so I forget about food I'm not well I like to do cooking and eating a lot but uh, I'm not like uh, it's not the first priority so uh, well got in my tortellini quick and easy and just boil them up and let them soak put them into some uh, tomato juice and uh, call it lunch yeah as you can see the priority I on the material well on this um, plush palatka now um, but I'm pretty much done I mean now I'm, it's only putting thrown it together now and uh, yeah put the shoulder bit the shoulder bit was a bit iffy because I have to join the bits straighten it all up and but in the end it's actually falling together like you know and uh, so it's not a big issue and uh, but I need some a break in between just to get my head straighten up and uh, yeah that whole works see you in a bit yes. so the first try so the hobbits are reborn uh, sort of yeah it's uh, I haven't put the slit in for the hand so it's uh, but it's uh, yeah and I still have to uh, uh, turn the edge over a bit and uh, putting some patches in for the uh, buttons and the toggles and uh, down here I yeah, have to put the, the uh, toggle on the back as well so to get this uh, the tail uh, put up so I'm not having that on the ground but in general it's a fairly generous uh, very lightweight poncho uh, yeah. look at that that uh, reminds me one of my favorite um, song like a cloak and a dagger 
Yeah, yet not get too clear to me. You are doomed. So, yes, turns out quite well. The woody bit and the um, string here on the top of the shoulder bit are put in place. Uh, call it a day. There's not much to do anymore. It's just uh, yeah, the uh, turnover all around. I put the edges in. Yeah, I mean, I have to put the eyelets in and um, the uh, patches for the uh, toggles. And basically, that's it. Um, yeah, I. That's how it is. I am a bit in the final stage. Um, I got my uh, plush palatka here. Yeah, it's not quite finished. I still have to uh, turn the edge over and uh, tap the uh, bits in, you know, for the um, uh, toggles. So, um, what I actually changed now, instead of having the eyelids, um, it was, as I told you in the beginning, I um, wanted my plush palatka to go together with the tarp. So what I did on the tarp is, actually, and that's what I'm gonna do on the um, uh, plush palatka as well. So I can use that as an, well it's actually matching the design, yeah? So, um, uh, hold on. Um, I got my DD hammock, yeah, that's a nylon one. So, uh, you can understand how I actually did that on the pop tarp, yeah. So, the basic idea is to have the plush palatka as a little tarp matching or as an additional smaller alternative or just as an awning or whatever. And um, instead of putting slots into it, I'm making copy the design I did on the um, tarp, yeah? And on the tarp, this is the edge, it's half an inch, yeah? And uh, I put a little patch in there and use some nylon webbing and uh, some uh, dynamia uh, cord so I can hang that up or pack that down somewhere, yeah? So, the idea came actually from the DD hammock, the nylon tarp, the ultralight tarp, yeah? What they did, they did pretty much the same thing, yeah? But instead of uh, having a canvas, it's all plastic, and this is a nylon reinforced uh, PVC, yeah, to stabilize it, just a punched out thing and just stitch it in place. And uh, obviously uh, put some uh, loop in here, well, some, some webbing in there. So they pretty much got the same design um, than what I copied here in a bit different fashion, but pretty much the same, yeah? So um, for the toggles and for the, um, uh, uh, instead of the slots, I'm putting a few more of these uh, patches on, yeah, like this one, but obviously a bit smaller than this one because uh, this is a 3x3 three three meter tarp and there's lots more tension on it. Yeah, I just wanted to show you the difference or what it is. This is the outside of the DD hammock, yeah, the uh, part where the uh, patch is actually stitched onto. I did it slightly different because it's easier to have a bit of squarish um, piece stitched on instead of round a curved one. Yeah, especially, well it doesn't matter on, on a straight one, it would just, uh, it, this is just the, the punched out uh, catch here, so they just stitch it straight on. It's no problem with that. But um, on this one actually, because I had to turn it over with all the canvas, um, it's easier to have it a bit in the square and uh, if you may notice that on the inside yeah this little darky triangle it's actually the tip extending and then folded inwards and tacked into the seam as well so this gives basically uh, uh, one two 
three, four, five layers for the um, uh, uh, stitching. So it's a pretty solid uh, uh, attachment for the um, webbing, and uh, it doesn't. Well, it's fairly uh, solid if there's some tension on it. Yeah, yeah. I had to make. I have to make the best out of the, uh, the last bit of scrap. Got a bit of sheet here, but I may need that for the um, uh, handle slot. So um, I'm using actually just the tiny bits, making the best out of it. And uh, it's not really much scrap left. Um, so uh, yeah, what I'm doing, just folding this in half. Yeah, basically. But before I can do that, I'm actually uh, going to turn this edge around. Actually, I'm going to iron that. It's much easier. Just for demonstration, I'll show you how I do that usually that way. All right. So this is doubled for start then. And then it's folded in half like so. Yeah, that's how it looks on the inside. So basically it's stitched on like that. Yeah, so the straps comes in the middle. And uh, this is the smaller version of the patch I use on the big tub. Just uh, fold the edges over. Take my iron. Iron that one. Turn this tip here. Hold that in place, try not to burn my hands and turn this tip like so. Line it up a bit, it doesn't matter if it's not quite straight, but right, as you can see, that's how they look like. And I uh, only have to trim the edges off and uh, this side actually this end is uh, tucked into the turnover seam on the edge and uh, then stitch around put the uh, webbing on and that's it so i have to do another few and i'm ready to go right put the needle down and now into the play. Um, I marked the spots up for the uh, little patches. So it's running along the edge and oh well, there it was. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't care about this here is the mark where actually the center of the patch is supposed to go. So I <laughs> run a bit further. So this is the first misfit today or on the whole project basically where I have to undo a bit. But it's only a few centimeters. So I'll just undo that and uh, carry on. Yeah, see that's... That can happen in a rush. That's, uh, well, I have to cut the tips off because they would go. So this is a straight, nice straight uh, patch. Yeah. So I'll put this one into the machine again and. Start again. Alright, so I haven't marked the center up, but it's fairly easy. Just tuck this in here down to the end, just push it in, line it up again, and uh, give it a go. Make sure it's all in there. Right now, while I'm here, I basically 
go around. It's the same thing without stopping the needle. And, uh, in there without overshooting again. Turn this inside out like that. Well, this makes a whole lot um, a bit awkward. The bigger the piece is, the more difficult it gets. But uh, yeah. as you can see, this mark is much better to see here. Yeah. So carry on, cutting the tips off. And uh, tuck that in there. Yeah, I have to do this on all 12 of this uh, thingies. And that's uh, instead of having eyelids and uh, slots. Uh, just uh, put some webbing on instead. Hope it's not slipping around. And, uh, one on there. Turn that a bit around. Needle down. And up to there. Turn this all the way that way around. And needle down oh, it's a foot down the needle comes down on itself all right so this is the next one i try to hit the seam so i'm going through the same stitch marks and uh, I don't like so see ending up here on the triangle why well, actually instead of putting an eyelid here I decided to put the strap in the webbing in like I did on the top yeah so the edge are pretty much the same it's just on this one the whole is the whole thing is a bit smaller so I use smaller patches because there's less less tension on so but I wasn't gonna do see there's only one seam here I using the opportunity and uh, go another one, making another one like in here. So I got a nice double seam here for double stability, and then uh, just carry on to the next one. And oh, since uh, I got all the stitching done, all the patches on, I start now. Um, putting the wax systematically all around the edges and uh, iron that in yeah so and at the same time I can actually check if I got all the seams done and if I haven't that I haven't missed anything out and uh, yeah that uh, requires some uh, some uh, time so I have to do that in and outside so I've done this one already um, yeah so just work my way along and um, gives the old thing a nice ironing so it's nice and straight and um, so the seams are all on the reason why I'm doing it now is uh, because before I put this, the um, uh, webbing on, I'm now on the last chance to get into the tiny gaps here. Yeah? Because when the nylon webbing is on top, um, I'm not getting into it. And the nylon is prone to, um, or is known for soaking up moisture. This is the curvy bit. It actually worked out quite nice. Uh, 
and they can see, no I won't see that, it's actually the, um, going all along here and it works out really really nice, I'm really pleased with that and uh, yeah. so it gives me some to enjoy of and uh, well, I'm out in the woods and can't just uh, retreat into the comfort cave yeah <laughs> I mean, uh, carry on using that Neanderthal uh, see alright this one yeah I walk my way through and uh, just uh, it's yeah, see sealing the seams, it's not as bad and actually can be done on the, the trail as well if needed, but it doesn't necessarily need an iron for that, it can lead uh, or just use a uh, warm stick, just heat the stick up and uh, pass it along and the Fjell Reven uh, webpage they actually explain how to do that on, on closing so there's not much different by doing it on this piece of kit and uh, yeah the ironing went uh, well done it all all the way around and all the patches and stuff and now doing a little strappy bit yeah I got this, um, what is it, it's yeah, 15 mil, <laughs> uh, I don't want to uh, cut some slots in for the toggles, yeah, so what I'm doing, I put some, uh, like I did on the tar, uh, put just in a, in a smaller uh, fashion, uh, stitch this webbing on there and then I can feed some uh, dynamil loops um yeah loops through and then um just make a loop where the toggle actually feeds through and that's holy so because i got plenty uh, space for feeding um the uh, cord in between put the lid on dial the flame off and uh yeah got all my webbings and uh yeah put them on and I'm almost, I'm getting tired now, uh, yeah, but I'm glad if I can call that finished. It's uh, three days, three days it took me now, and with all the video, you know, it <laughs> uh, takes it even longer, but uh, well, I hope you enjoy this sort of um, video and may uh, got some useful tips out of it for your own project. This is done. The torch is over. Three days I was messing with this lot. So as you can see, I got um, toggles here. Yeah, put them on. And on the opposite side, I managed to get uh, a bit of the dynamic loop in here. So the toggle actually uh, then goes in there show you that in detail this is a tail bit yeah so the, the tail bit goes in there and i'll show you how that works putting all this webbing on and the straps so basically only what i need to do this is the tail bit yeah just hang it in there and uh, that's it so the same works with the uh, uh, closure just uh, feed it in there and uh, that's it yeah so this so matching up and uh, that's how it works yeah but um, this is an addition to the top so I got the top as a top tent this as a little awning and um, uh, whatever it's a rain coat cloak yeah the dagger cloak and dagger thing and um, multi-purpose yeah um, so I can wrap my uh, stuff in 
as well and put it across the rucksack like sausage type uh, weather protection and uh, so yeah even if it's a bit more weight than um, a nylon tarp like the DD hammock tarp um, it still provides me with a lot more options and most important it's uh, yeah spark proof yeah and I don't have to bother so it doesn't leak and uh, so it's well worth having a bit extra weight because what good is it if you are soaking wet and on an ultra hyper lightweight um, you won't enjoy that <laughs> so rather um, go a bit slower and uh, with a bit more weight it's not that much more weight well it's yeah it's a bit more weight but um, that will do so now I'm done I'm aging sick and uh, yeah look that's it toggle buttons and um, yeah, I haven't got the handle bit in here. I'm gonna do that another time. I may uh, have to adjust the toggle bits a bit to make them a bit more reliable. But as you can see, the woody bit, let's see. Yeah, I tell you, this was what the task. And, uh, I didn't count the old uh, how many teas I had, but um, yeah, I'm fed up with it now. <laughs> but um, the project is done. I hope you enjoyed. And um, what can I say? Um, that's the end of the uh, this little uh, episode for. Um, episodes of this how to make this plush palatka yeah and um, it works out and uh, as I say if it gives you an idea or some ideas to do this uh, for yourself putting this in um, action yeah on the trail and uh, so that's why I wanted to make this uh, ready as soon as possible i got my pack already packed so um, stay tuned you may get some more outdoor videos uh, soon after this one my uh, rain protection plush palatka ready and uh, all the wizard thing is done and uh, yeah see you soon bye enjoy give me a thumb up or not or put a comment in um that's it